And SP Corner means we have invited two people. So this is Chrissy Jones and Johannes Trück to join us tonight. So briefly introduce both of them to you. So both of them have previously received SBIT fellowship grants. So Chrissy is now an associate professor in the pediatric infectious diseases at the University of Southampton. Thank you. Um, and her main research interest is uh, interventions in pregnancy. So, for example, uh, pre vaccinations in pregnant mothers to prevent infections in early life. And Chrissy has been the chair of the ESPIT Committee for Education since 2016. And secondly, we have invited Johannes Struck to join us. So Johannes is now is a consultant in pediatric uh, uh, immunologist, uh, and he's also associate professor at the University of Zurich. And uh, he's a clinician scientist, and he has a strong interest in both pediatric infectious diseases and immunology, and also in, in translational uh, research in both of these areas. Um, Johannes has been the ESPI treasurer since 2017, and uh, we like to welcome them and ask them a couple of questions. Sorry, here, here they are. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome to both of you. Hello. Uh, Thank you. And you, you see, he put the same shirt. <laughs> here we Those are. Those are trying to be sweats, yeah. Yep. So, Chrissy, maybe I will start with the first question. Uh, you are remember, you're the chair of the education committee. So what does this committee do, actually? Yes, it's been a pleasure to work with this committee because there's, there's lots going on in this committee. Um, so we host ESPID Education, and on ESPID Education, we have monthly case rounds and a journal club. We um, host the Congress videos from previous Congresses. So if you've missed out on something from previous years, you can go back and um, find a talk on a certain subject. And we also run the very popular Walter Margo workshop for trainees, which occurs um, on the two days before the main Congress starts. And we also run the local course and awards workshop. So if you're looking to, um, to run a, a local course over the next year, please do be in contact because we'd um, love to support you doing that. So it's a good committee, lots going on. Great. Chrissy, which of these activities do you think is the most successful so far? So the Walter Margate workshop is really popular every year. Um, we often have more um, people applying than we can um, accommodate. So we normally accommodate 50, although we took a slightly more this year with a virtual format. Um, and we always get really, really good feedback from this. And trainees often say this is the highlight of ESPID for them. Um, so it's a really great experience. So if you're a trainee, please do look out for applications for next year. So next question goes to Johannes. So um, ESPID has been challenged. So tell us a little bit like about the challenges last year and maybe also the good things which have come out of last year. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, obviously the last year was um, challenging for obvious reasons and uh, it was being, it was challenging for both being on the board, but also being in charge of the finances of ESPID. Um, I think we made uh, some good and, and lucky decisions, I guess, uh, early on by postponing the last uh, year's meeting and deciding early on to go fully virtual. And uh, against the initial odds, actually, we had a very uh, successful meeting in October 2020, both scientifically and uh, you know, speaking as a treasurer, also financially. And that was mainly thanks to really the amazing Dutch uh, local organizing committee and Kenneth, the company supporting us in all our meetings. Um, what did the, one of the effects also was uh, that the time between those two meetings was very short. And uh, thanks to you, to you, the committee, well, the uh, meeting chairs and the local organizing committee, you've actually made a very successful meeting in a very short time period. Uh, one thing that not to forget is really the uh, industry participation and, and their interest and financial support uh, during the last year, because we couldn't have done any of those meetings without the um, financial support from those um, companies that actually support us um, regularly. Um, a meeting in, in that size of ESPID is, is very costly it's, uh, it, and it needs um, support there. So that's sort of the challenges in, uh, that are related to the meeting. Um, and uh, there's other things that uh, are ongoing on the board level and on the, as a treasurer. Um, we have, for example, have a new website. You may have seen that. 
uh, which is uh, much more user friendly and uh, visually pleasing than the other one. And uh, you've heard from from Chrissy that there are lots of uh, new and existing educational activities. And there's also some other things that are more behind the scenes that we are uh, developing that makes it uh, more easy to run the society uh, administratively. Chrissy, I get back to you for a question. Um, you are organizing in the Education Committee the case rounds, which go through the year every, very regularly. Can you tell you, us a little bit more about that? For who, it, who the target audience is? How can we join? What it is it for? Yeah, so the case rounds are for everyone. Um, we probably have a higher proportion of young SBIF members who do the case rounds, but certainly anybody can um, take part in these. And there is normally one, sometimes two tutors who run the case rounds. It can be a junior paired with a senior member or just a senior member running these case rounds. Um, and the case develops over the course of a week. So a case scenario is set at the beginning of the week and questions are asked and um, delegates can um, interact with one another, answer questions, perhaps provide some papers to answer those questions. Um, and the case evolves across the week and is hopefully solved by the end of the week. So it's a fun way to um, interact with peers and to learn more. Um, and certainly anybody can, can do this. And there's an email that goes out every month letting you know which, which case is coming up. So look out for those emails um, to, to know which cases and who, are, who will be the tutors for those cases coming up. Um, Johannes, um, since you are the treasurer, as you said, and you are in command of, I guess, more than a million euros, may I ask you, how high is the bonus that you receive when you do a good job? I remember when I was the treasurer, um, the bonus was a free dinner after a long board meeting. How is it today? Well, uh, unfortunately, apart from having the joy of counting the money and, uh, you know, like uh, uh, in, in the, the Donald Duck uh, comics, um, there's not much additional benefit for me there. Uh, but you're right. We, um, as a society, we're enjoying group activities uh, as a social group and we We go out for dinner when we physically meet, but unfortunately we haven't had any board meetings, physical board meetings for the last one and a half years, but we're planning one uh, in, in autumn this year and uh, we have, uh, well, decided or sort of wished for to go to, to Spain that Pablo is going to host us. So hopefully that's going to happen, but uh, we'll see. So Johannes, where does the money then go to? Tell us a little bit what the ESPIT members get out of the society. Well, um, you know, you've heard some of the educational activities that, that uh, costs money to, to set this up. We have other activities that uh, are being supported is uh, local training courses. This is um, the, the uh, online activities, but it's uh, a lot of grants. So uh, you can go uh, for a clinical fellowship, go somewhere abroad. You can do a research fellowship abroad. Uh, you can set up a, a small study And we give you some startup funding for that in the small grant awards. And then the flagship, our um, ESPIT fellowship, which is given to one to two people per year. Um, and uh, that is very successful. And uh, so these are just a few things that we're supporting. There's also the research networking committee that does additional things such as helping with um, collaborative studies or just having collaborative meetings uh, supported. Um, yeah, so... These are most of the things. Thank you. We would love to talk to you, to you longer. And I think we really look forward to when we have time to kind of not, not press by time as we are a little bit tonight. But before we finish off with both of you, we'd, I'd like to ask Chrissy kind of a, a fun fact about you. So tell us a little bit. So what is, are you a chocolate lover? Yes, I'm also a chocolate lo lover, Nicole. And a bit like you probably ate too much chocolate over lockdown. So um, my fun fact for this week is I've been doing SBID whilst on um, a treadmill. So I've had the treadmill going and trying to walk and be active rather than just um, sitting still. And the reference to you was um, from yesterday. You said you ate too much chocolate, but then ended up doing more sport to work it off. So it was that rather than any comments on current. <laughs> There you go. So how about you, Johannes? Well, I love everything that's outdoors. So doing activities outdoors. Um, hiking, uh, but I'm also an avid mountain biker, which I'm happy to do 
<laughs> here and in the mountains. And uh, also I like, um, well, chocolate, but uh, all sorts of other sweets. So um, yeah, got, got a sweet tooth. So let me thank you both for joining us tonight uh, and sharing your thoughts and also some personal facts with us and with the rest of the ESPIT community. Thank you very much. Thank you.